Hi, welcome back to PSRE Math Heuristic Lesson. Uh, today we are going to look at a, a, a very special category of problems, uh, which is finding a pattern. Uh, so these kind of questions are quite underrated, or in other words, not a lot of emphasis is placed on this category of problems uh, because you don't really see these problems coming out in the exams uh, even if it does come out uh, maybe it's about one of them one of these questions that will come out in the exams and uh, sometimes in the exam papers you may not have these pattern problems uh, and also there's something very interesting about this entire category this whole group of particular questions uh, which you will see what is so interesting about <laughs> okay now uh, when we come across finding a pattern problems all the methods that you have learned so far will not be able to apply on this group of questions like your assumption, model drawing, assess and shortage. Uh, all those methods that you have seen so far won't be used in this group of questions. So which means that you have to learn a different set of skills. All right, there's a different set of skills that you need to use in order to solve this group of questions. Uh, okay, so in schools, what tutors or what teachers will usually do is they will have a table, right? You have a pattern problem, uh, you have a table, and then and then what? And then you find a number pattern. So one of the lessons that uh, that we do in MLGS is to look for number patterns, and it's not just looking for number patterns. There are skills, right? There are some skills that you need to learn uh, in order to identify different types of number patterns and how to how to recognize the patterns. Uh, and what is so interesting about this question is uh, now because we are always looking at numbers right looking at numbers and there's also a picture given to us in this question so if we look at numbers there is actually no need to look at the pictures <laughs> okay there's actually no need to look at the pictures <clears throat> just by looking at the table to fill in the missing numbers and just by looking at the table to work out the answers so we don't really need to look at the pictures then why do we have pictures in the first place <laughs> right that's the that's the question which I have in my mind so if there is a picture given to us in the first place which means that uh, there must be something else to learn right otherwise without the pictures I, I don't need to look at the pictures I just have to look at the numbers to find a number pattern so which means that there are actually two lessons to learn over here number one is to look for number patterns and number two is to learn to look for a picture pattern and this second lesson uh, which I won't talk about it during in this in this lesson now uh, this picture pattern finding a picture pattern is something that we don't really teach all right, we don't really, uh, most schools or some teachers, they don't really teach how to find a picture pattern. Uh, most teachers, all right, many people or many tutors or many teachers, uh, what they do is they will look at the numbers in the table and then they will use, uh, use the numbers to find the pattern and then use the pattern to solve the problem because, because it's more straightforward, it's easier, which is true all right it's easier to look at the table to to find the pattern easily uh, and to look at the pictures for a pattern it is actually harder all right it's actually harder uh, but there are skills in looking at the pictures to find a pattern uh, so the question is if the picture is given to us in the in the in the question then we should also be learning to look at the pictures to find a pattern and not just always look at the numbers only uh, but nevertheless this is what we are having in schools now all right? or most teachers we look at uh, the numbers numbers in the table uh, so for today's lesson we will do the same all right we will look at the numbers in the table to work out the answers all right uh, but in MLGS uh, I will also teach you how to how to look at the pictures to find patterns picture patterns okay so let's look at uh, the first uh, let's look at this first part of the lesson uh, I'm gonna just ignore the picture there's supposed to be a picture given to you figure one figure two figure three but like what I mentioned with the numbers given to us we don't need to look at the pictures all right there's no need to look at the pictures at all all right you just have to concentrate on the numbers all right so complete the table for figure four all right so there are some important skills that you need to understand how to use uh, like uh, if you look at the table you have two five nine the, the, the second column uh, you need to all right you need to do what you need to uh, find a pattern so you have plus three and then you have plus four and then of course the next one will be plus five which is quite easy to get the number right so in figure 4 there are 14 shaded triangles and then how about uh, the unshaded triangles so you plus 2 and then you plus 3 and then you plus 4 so in figure 4 there are 11 11 unshaded triangles so this pattern is very clear very quite easy to recognize okay now one of the number skills or one of the pattern skills that we need to 
uh, to, to learn is to be able to recognize special numbers, right? Some special numbers, like for example, 4, right? 4, 9, 16, and, uh, and 15, right? 15. Uh, I think there's a little mistake there. That should be 25, okay? Not 15. So that should be 25, 25 triangles. So these are all special numbers. Now, why are they special numbers? Because they can be square rooted. Like 2 times 2, you get 4. 3 times 3, you get 9. 4 times 4, you get 16, and 5 times 5, you get 25. So you have to recognize what are special numbers because the special numbers will give you the clue to the figure number. Like, for example, if you look at uh, 2 times 2, how does it tell you what is the figure number? 2 times 2, the, the 2, you just have to minus 1, and you get figure 1. And you repeat the same pattern. Like 3 times 3, you repeat the same pattern, you minus 1, you get figure 2. And then 4 times 4, you minus 1, you get figure 3. And 5 times 5, you minus 1, you get figure 4. So you need to recognize special numbers. Very important. Because in most pattern problems, you will always have special numbers. And the special numbers may tell you what is the figure number. OK, so complete the table for figure 4. So we are done already. Now, a figure number in the pattern has a total of 144 triangles. So this is the total triangles and uh, what is the figure number. So you are supposed to find what is the figure number here. OK, so how do we do that? Now, uh, because we, we recognize that the, uh, that the, the, we recognize that the special numbers, they all belong in the same column, right? If you look at the last column, that's where all the special numbers are together. So you square root 144 and you will get 12 times 12, right? 12 times 12 is 144. So how do you get the figure number? You take 12 and you minus 1 and you get figure 11. So what figure number has a total of 144 triangles? So that figure number is 11. And that's how you work it out quite easily, right? Okay, now, so we have gotten the figure number already. So what happened if the question, right? If the question wants me to, uh, for example, to find how many shaded triangles in figure 11 and how many unshaded triangles in figure 11, uh, then what do we do? All right, now, another, another, number pattern skill is this all right so uh, so besides looking for special numbers you will also need to look at the differences right one of the one of the very uncommon ways or one of the usually not very common uh, and students don't really uh, don't really uh, do this because they are not aware uh, they need to be aware of what they need to be aware of uh, when you look at a table, you don't just look downwards <laughs> usually we all look downwards uh, but you also need to look horizontally. All right, you also need to look at it, look at the table horizontally, uh, because if you look at the table horizontally, uh, you will see some, some important things. Like, for example, okay, let me just look horizontally. Okay, for example, if you look horizontally, uh, there's a difference of how many triangles. 2 minus 2, there's a difference of uh, 0, right? And then you go to the figure 2, and you look horizontally, and uh, what's the difference? There's a difference of 1. Okay, and then uh, figure three horizontally. What is the difference? The difference is two. And then you look horizontally again in the next figure. The difference is three. So if you look carefully, uh, if you look carefully, figure one has a difference of zero. Figure two has a difference of one. Figure three has a difference of two. So how do you get the differences? Right, you take the figure number and you minus one to get the differences. Right, so the pattern is what is the pattern to get the difference? The pattern to get the difference is you take all the figure number and you minus one and you get the difference. So, for example, if I have figure 11, right, figure 11, okay, then what is the difference? How many more? I take figure 11 minus one, that is a difference of 10, all right, a difference of 10. Okay, so with that, can I find how many shaded triangles and how many unshaded triangles? Yes, of course I can. Uh, so how do I do that? By using a simple model, <laughs> right? A simple model, like I know that there are more shaded triangles than unshaded. So I draw a longer rectangle and a shorter rectangle, right? And the difference is 10, right? How many more? 10 more. So the shaded triangles is 10 more than the unshaded. And what is the total? What is the total triangles, which is 144? Four, four. So can I find how many shaded and how many unshaded triangles? Yes, I can. I take 144, four, and I minus 10, and then I divide by 2. And I will get 67, 
Alright, so I have 67 unshaded triangles, which is, okay, let me just write in a different color. So I have 67 unshaded triangles. Oh, no, wrong place to put. Let me put the other side. So I have 67 unshaded triangles, which is over here. And how many shaded triangles? I must have 77 shaded triangles, which is over here. Right, so I got 77 shaded and I have 67 unshaded. And if you add together, uh, what do you get? If you add together, you will get 144 triangles altogether. So this second number pattern skill is to look for differences. Whatever pattern, whatever, uh, whatever patterns you're trying to look at, uh, is always to do with the figure number, right? You always fall back, it's always related to the figure number. So for example, special numbers. Why do we look at special numbers? So that we can use the special numbers to do what? To find what is the figure number, right? And uh, you look at the differences. Uh, why do we look at differences? So that we can find the, the pattern, right? And we can find the pattern uh, between the figure number and the differences, and we use that pattern to find to find what to find figure 11 has how many how many more right to find figure 11 has what difference so so this is how we uh, we look at number patterns and you can see that without even looking at the pictures I can get the answers already which is a little a little interesting because if 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 we don't need to look at the pictures to get the answer then why do we need to put pictures in the first place right so there must be a second lesson which we seldom really do which is to look for a picture patterns and that is where it is more challenging right it's more challenging to look at look for a picture pattern than to look for a number pattern so when uh who when do we look for a picture pattern or when do we do that now uh, my advice is this. Now, if you can look for number patterns to get the answer, then you should be doing that because it's more straightforward, it's easier. Uh, but if you find that looking at the table and you still can't get the answer, then you need to switch, right? You have to switch your method, uh, switch your particular style to what? To looking at the pictures to find a picture pattern, right? So you have a backup, right? A backup. So most of us, we keep looking at the table to look for the answers and then what happened? We get stuck and then we can't do anything. But those of us who know how to look at the pictures for a pattern, you have a backup, right? There's always a backup to help you to continue. All right, so uh, so we, we will not be looking at this picture pattern. So this is actually the pictures that was given to us, right? Uh, so if we, without the table, uh, without looking at the numbers in the table, we can actually find some picture patterns inside this diagram. Uh, but we will not do that now, just to let you know that uh, when you do pattern problems, there are two ways of doing, is to find a number pattern or to find a picture pattern. Okay, now, so some of the skills that we need to know, right? Some of the skills that we need to, need to know in order to look for number patterns. So first one is to look for special numbers, like what I told you, right? Special numbers. And then there's something called rainbow method, which is very common in your pattern problems. So you will need to know how to use the rainbow method, which I think many of us know already, or I call it the pairing method, right? Rainbow method, pairing method. And of course, we have also done this, how to look for differences, right? How to look, how to recognize differences and using the differences to find a pattern. And then we also need to understand the concept, the method of three rows get the answer, right? This was one of the heuristic lesson that we talked about some months ago, uh, we can actually use the same method to do pattern problems. And of course, there are some other number pattern skills as well. Okay, so uh, once you understand all these number pattern skills, then you should be able to, uh, able to solve pattern problems uh, quite easily. Okay, now how about picture pattern? Now to look for picture patterns, there are some skills that you will need to achieve or you will need to uh, pick up. Number one, look for symmetry because some pictures is symmetrical, right? Some pictures are quite symmetrical. So that symmetrical, uh, the, the symmetry will tell you some clues, all right, about the picture pattern. And then number two, you have to relate the figure number to the picture pattern, right? There is a relationship between the figure number and the pictures that you see. There is, there is actually a relationship between them. And uh, number three, you look for an arrangement called one, two, three. Why is one, two, three? Uh, like for example, sometimes you have one square on top, you have two squares at the bottom, and then you have three squares below. So that arrangement is one, two, three arrangement. So when you have one, two, three arrangement, then what is the next thing we do? We can use the rainbow method to work out the answer. 
right? So of course, we'll talk about this during the MLGS lessons. So look for one, two, three arrangement. And uh, the next one is to look for common similarity. In all the figures given to you, most of the time, there is always something similar in all the pictures, right? For example, if you look at uh, the pictures over here, what is something similar in all this figure? <laughs> in all this figure, there's something very similar, which is actually the triangle. <laughs> okay, the triangle. Alright, so there's something similar in all the figures. So you, if you can look for that, then uh, what do you do? You ignore that similarity and you look at the rest of the arrangement. Alright, so whatever that's similar in all the Whatever that's similar in uh, in all these figure, what do we do? We actually ignore them so that we can focus on those which are which are not similar. Okay, not similar. <clears throat> Alright, so and of course there will be some other picture pattern skills as well. So these are the different types of uh, these are the different types of skills that we can we can learn to find a number pattern and to also find a picture pattern. So so the 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 skills and the methods are totally different from what you have learned so far. We do not use assumption. We do not use uh, guess and check. We don't use guess and check. Uh, we do not use all the other methods you have learned to solve these kind of questions. You will need a different set of skills in order to solve this problem. Uh, but the good thing is, right? Good thing is, it's not a very common type of question. Uh, Usually, it is the question that's at the end of the last page or the last page of the exam paper. Uh, the the, the four mark and the five mark question usually, and uh, also unfortunately, it is also one of the hardest questions to to tackle sometimes. Right? Sometimes it can be quite hard to to find a pattern. So, but otherwise, uh, sometimes you see this question in the exam. Sometimes you don't see. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are done with the heuristic lessons, and uh, so. Uh, in our next lesson, we are going to look at a very big method, right? There are three biggest method, uh, three biggest method uh, that you need to learn in order to do well. Like for example, model drawing, very common method, and it's the biggest method of all. Number two is your before and after, before and after uh, tabulation, right? If you don't want to draw model for before and after problems, then you have this tabulation method, which is also very big method to learn. Uh, and then the next one is your speed distance timeline model. So speed is one of the topic, or is the topic that is very hard to understand. Uh, so, but there is a there is a way to understand the problem is through drawing out the model. And what do I call? What do we call this model? We call this model speed distance timeline. All right, it's a speed distance timeline model. Uh, so you will you will look look at it in the next lesson. Right, you will you will you will be able to understand how it looks like, and uh, and that's what we do in our. MLGS lesson as well. So we will teach you on how to draw the speed distance timeline model. Alright, so see you in the next heuristic lessons.